In this episode of Beast Legends, there is a possibility you may die. Yeah. A team of investigators goes to the humid jungles of Southeast Asia in search of a modern mystery. Do you still think there are wild men out there? Stories are told of a wild man, a beast that runs like a man but looks like an ape. American soldiers in Vietnam say they had encounters. But I have never seen anything like this ever in my life. Is it a distant relative of Bigfoot or something very different? How long did he see them for? The Wild Man of Vietnam. There's something there. What's that noise? Stories of terrifying monsters are told the world over. Some are myths, but others are believed to be real. Now a team of investigators will track down clues and find evidence for the beast behind the legend. The quest to build the creature. Bring it to life and unleash it on the modern world. Spot there, green. Steve and Francis are in Southeast Asia. Uh, try not to die. To begin research on the Vietnamese wild man. I think this would be a great spot to get some initial information on this. Game. At the same time, the rest of the team has gathered in the Beast Lab to search for the origins of the legend. That would actually be really useful. Yeah, so let's take a look at that. Deep in the rainforests of Vietnam, Villagers live in fear of a dangerous creature that silently moves through the trees. A beast that walks like a man, but is not a man. A giant with superhuman strength and an appetite for flesh. The Wild Man of Vietnam. This story has inspired the team to imagine what this beast might be and to bring it to virtual life. One of the fun things about the Vietnamese wild man legend is how long it's been around, centuries. I wonder if this is the same thing as, uh, you know, Bigfoot in North America. It's a good question. I mean, lots of different cultures have their hairy wild man story. The classic North American Bigfoot is about seven feet tall. It's got dark hair. This one is kind of shorter, and it has mostly reddish brown hair. There are fairly recent sightings um, from both sides of the Vietnam War. Yeah, there's one fellow in particular, his name is Linderer, um, and so he's a Vietnam vet from the American side, um, and seems to be a credible witness to Purple Hearts. He's written a couple of books about his experiences there, and he says that when he was 20 on uh, one of these kind of deep, long-range patrols, uh, he saw something. Linderer put his story on tape for us, and it's never been seen before. He claims to have seen this thing. Uh-huh, face to face. So this footage was shot by Linderer in 1968. It shows him as a young man when he was stationed in central Vietnam. And he'd only been there for about a month before he had his encounter. Basically, he was dropped into the jungle by helicopter before dawn. And then just when the sun came up, he saw the creature. And he still remembers every detail vividly. We were in a line formation uh, where we had spent the night on this hillside. No one could see us through the thicket unless they actually came through it and we were about 10 meters below that thicket on the hillside. Uh, the creature we saw the next morning uh, busted through that thicket. Uh, we, we didn't hear him approach it. All we heard him was coming through it and it was just a uh, shaking of leaves and branches and a, and a lot of noise and all of a sudden he stepped through the clearing and was standing there looking down at us. It was approximately five foot six to five foot 10 tall. Uh, and that's hard to determine because it was above us on a steep hillside. It could have been taller than that. It might have been shorter than that, but it was, it was man-sized. The eyes were very clear, uh, very intelligent looking. I remember there was somewhat of a look of surprise in the eyes, not fear, surprise. We saw a lot of wild animals, elephants, tigers out in the, in the bush, gibbons, uh, the smaller monkeys, but I had never seen anything like this ever in my life. Well, this is, okay, this is interesting. I mean, he says he's seen gibbons. He obviously saw something. The question is what? 
I think what we have to start with is just a basic man shape and then work on it from there. Maybe about 5'10". Francis and Steve are planning on um, talking to a Viet Cong veteran there uh, in the Hue province, so exactly the same kind of area that Linderer's sighting took place in. That's great. It'll be really important to get the Vietnamese perspective on this. Two different sides, same story. So now we found ourselves in Hue. This is the region where Linderer was stationed in 1968. This city saw some intense fighting during the Vietnam War, and the ancient imperial capital still shows its battle scars. Hello, you guys speak English? <laughs> Never mind the phrase book, just dive straight in. Why not? Stories of the wild man are also alive and well here, so it's the perfect place to get the Vietnamese side of this story. Oh, I can see a jeep. We're headed to meet an ex-Viet Cong soldier called Ho Van Han, who may be the key to our quest. So, we've arranged for an appropriate ride. Hello. Dang, this is the man. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. morning Vietnam also. <laughs> Oh, you're driving? Yeah. No. You look about 12. Have you even got a license? That's low range and high range. What does that mean? Um, that, that means that you're sitting in the wrong seat. Right. This is going to be a long and slow, bumpy ride into the middle of nowhere. And of course, we arrived right in the middle of freaking monsoon season. We need to buy some umbrellas. Which means we could encounter anything from typhoons to floods. It's going to be awesome. Nice. Yo, yo, yo. Okay, okay. It's a buyer's market, people. Yeah, yeah. I feel good. I think. Oh, you, you look sweet. Oh, and look, and look, you've got a window. Okay, I don't need to see that. Hundred dollars. Is that okay? Cool. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is the only way to get to Ho Van Han's tiny commune in the countryside, but he knows the wild man legend inside and out. The plan is to get a clear description of the wild man so Francis can draw some sketches to send back to the beast lab. Okay, so far we've barely encountered much on the storm front, but it looks like we're about to suffer a flood after all. Give it five minutes. It might be slightly flooded. It's smelling a bit rich. Oh. If we don't get going soon, we're going to struggle to get there today. We've got 42 kilometers to go. The jeep stalled, and right on cue, the downpour begins. Seriously, man, this isn't good. We've traveled halfway around the world to meet with Ho Van Han. We can't give up now it's time to resort to some drastic measures. way to meet a former Viet Cong soldier who has information about the wild man of Vietnam. But our trusty jeep has died. It's flooded, and so are we. And we still have 42 kilometers to go. I wonder if, you know, there's like tons of bike shops. I wonder if we could like rent a scooter or something. Do you fancy riding a scooter on this road in this weather? For the no, first I, time I, in your life? I don't at all. <laughs> but I mean, how else are we going to get there? Mm, what are our chances of getting another vehicle? Hitching lift, you know, hitch? Impossible. Impossible? No, no one okay. hitches rides here? Francis is clearly not very good at taking direction, which can come in handy sometimes. Thanks. Will you give us a ride? Steve, yeah, we got a ride. I can't believe you managed to hitch us a ride after <laughs> they said it was impossible. Yeah, I know, right? Thank you. Come on. Uh, Thank you very much. 
Ho Von Han fought in the very same region as Linda Ru, but on the other side. Now he's a respected community leader, and he's agreed to talk to a couple of complete strangers. But we're three hours late, and who knows if he's still going to be cool and willing to talk to us. Is this coming? Yeah, oh. please. This is, this is the man. So, can you apologize for us being so late? Uh, yeah, we had a few problems with the vehicle. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you still think there are wild men out there? What did the face of the wild man look like? Yeah. What did the nose look like? Was it, was it flat or did it... I'm impressed by the detail of Mr. Han's telling of the legend. And Francis's sketch isn't too shabby either. The Beast Lab can take this and start building the beast. We're basically getting information to, to create uh, an animated version. We want to recreate it and see what, what it would look like if it was real. And then based on the information that you've given us, uh, it, we definitely have what we're looking for. Wow. That was interesting. So here's a sketch that Francis has uploaded to us. Let's just play with it a little bit and yeah. see if we can get something that looks a little bit more like what Francis has given us here. Don't you think the whole cheek areas need to be a lot more robust? I agree with you, actually. Exactly. Right. Yeah, what the heck is going on below the knees? Because Francis didn't draw that. Right now I got this, human feet. Yeah, I don't think that's going to do it. There is a guy in Hanoi, uh, Dr. Viet, who claims to have this uh, cast of a footprint. And that's exactly who they should talk to. With over six million people, Hanoi is one of the world's fastest growing cities. And the proof is, well, everywhere. We're on our way to see a man about a foot cast, but we'll never make it through the traffic if we don't resort to our favorite modes of transportation. Hanoi just seems to be one big traffic jam. Unfortunately, the guy we're gonna go and see, Dr. Viet, he's on the other side of town, uh, and this is the only time he can see us, so we're gonna have to basically race over there. I'm gonna try and run over there, uh, this guy thinks it's faster on the skateboard, so we've decided to make it a race uh, and may the best man win. Right, let's go. Okay, guys, this is the race. Francis reckons he can get across town on these streets faster than me. Right. <laughs> Hang on a second. Yeah, well, bye-bye. Street signs anywhere around here. Oh, shit, I have no idea where he is. See him running. Oh, yeah. Off in the distance. Is that? <laughs> oh, I'm so wrong. There's got to be an easier way. I'm totally friggin' lost now. This place is a nightmare. We're racing through the congested streets of Hanoi to meet a Vietnamese scientist who may just have the clue we need to find out what the wild man of this country could really be. There's no freaking way he's gonna beat me to our meeting with Dr. Viet. Call me old fashioned, but two feet are always superior to one longboard. Where am I? Or so I hope. Am I here first? I got lost. 
and I'm here first. Steve. Ha ha! I think I see you. You have got to be kidding me. Hey, Steve. How's it going? You must have friggin' cheated. You swear to God you didn't get in a vehicle. I did not get in a vehicle. You oh. towed a vehicle. Perhaps. I'm so sure he cheated. But never mind. We're here to inspect a footprint. Specifically, a cast of what Dr. Viet says is a wild man footprint. Do you know if he speaks English? Dr. Viet? Dr. Viet? Hi. Francis. Sun <laughs> Chao. <laughs> We basically came here to find out more about the wild man. We had heard that you have a, a cast of the foot, and we're hoping that that would help us build this, this creature that we're trying to create. Uh, so hopefully you have some, some visuals for us that we can maybe take a look at. Tồn tại ở một số nước mà cũng có thể không còn tồn tại nữa. Như ở Việt Nam đấy thì chứng tỏ là cái dạng người rừng đã lâu đó vẫn còn tồn tại mà họ chưa phải là Homo sapiens là người văn minh đâu mà là người cổ đại. Has it got a scientific name? Homo erectus, Homo. I think, I think uh, it's uh, Homo erectus. You know what Homo erectus is? It's one of the early hominids, one of the first bipedal apes, okay. one of our ancestors. Right. Then finally. Dr. Viet produces a photograph of the famous footprint. Why is this not Homo sapiens? Bởi vì chân người nhé. Thứ nhất là không bao giờ có cái hõm sâu này. Cái vùng này nó hõm rất sâu, lõm sâu. Vì thế cho nên nó rộng xuống đất đi, là đất nó bị lồi lên nên là cái miếng đất nó lồi lên nhá. Have you got a cast? You've got something yeah, if we could see something tangible. Why do you not want this cast film? 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 Why Hi. 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 Right. Sorry, guys. You can't come. Sorry. <laughs> That's really, is there a pic? Do we have a, can we get a, a screenshot or something of the photograph that he showed earlier? I could pull one up. There's a guy, Jeff Meldrum, at Idaho State University who is actually a very accomplished biomechanics expert, but he also happens to take stock of the idea that there's Bigfoot running around North American forests. We'll show it to him to see what he has to say. Good luck. We just need more information about the habitat. We have the footage from the Vietnam vet, Linder, but we also have the location Ooh. for the sighting. So I think we should send Francis and Steve there. How about we take a look at that footage again? Yeah, let's do that. So Gary Linderer saw his upright walking beast somewhere in this very jungle. All Steve and Francis have to do is find the right spot. And they've got the coordinates, they've got a map and a GPS, so that ought to get them there. With the info Catherine's given us, I'm sure we'll find the place. The Jeep's holding up, the rain's holding off. Things are looking up. Use that path there. That's fine. Right. Just go through the village, I guess. It just gives just one else. small problem. Francis has never set foot in a jungle before. It's really tempting to just grab trees to okay. pull yourself up slopes and things like that. You, you know, never mind snakes. There could be scorpions, black ants, right. red ants, all those sorts of things. Don't use anything vegetation to hang on to. Also, some of the vegetation around here, I don't know, but being in other jungles, can be very um, irritating. You know, so they have thorns on them, they have toxins on them. So, don't hang on to anything. Okay, don't pull yourself up by anything, uh, trees or anything along those lines. Hands off okay. everything. We're not far, we're about um, one and a half k's. Um, what, what time is it? Uh, well, this one down is around five, so okay. we, we got less than uh, about you, an hour. Are you guys happy to run? Yeah. yeah we're okay, to let's just, just run it and we'll see how we get on. Great, it's almost nightfall. I can't touch anything, it's freaking hot. 
we're right in the peak of the rainy season, which forces all the venomous snakes to pop out of their holes. The jungle is probably crawling with them. Oh, so slippery. Slippery. If I get bit, I'm coming back from the dead and taking Steve with me. This is completely mental. And Steve, I don't even know where he is, but if I don't see him, he's, he's dead to me. Ah. Oh, sugar. <laughs> this is no good. This is the eucalyptus. This has all been, you know, cropped since, since the war. This is now farmland. That's the same. That's not jungle anymore. We need to find, we need to find jungle. At the height of the Vietnam War, a US soldier saw a wild man in this exact location. But now that we're here, we can see that the jungle is, well, not a jungle anymore. It's been cleared for crops, and we need to search for another location. It's all planted out. This, is, this isn't jungle anymore. This is, this is farmland. So this is no good for us. This isn't wild man country anymore. We need to find, uh, I mean, proper jungle. It's not wild man country, but this is plenty wild to me. <laughs> Dead end. All right, so hopefully uh, Scott's got more luck in Idaho. Pocatello, Idaho might seem like an odd location to investigate a Vietnamese wild man, but it's the right place to follow up on that footprint Stephen Francis saw in Dr. Viet's office. Scott. Hi, Jeff. Good How to are see you? you. Very good. These are good. These are excellent. Dr. Meldrum is the guy people turn to when they think they've found evidence of a Bigfoot. He's analyzed hundreds of unusual footprints from all over the world. We know we have a flat-footed animal, and we know it has five digits. So essentially, if it isn't human, the only other candidate out there is, is a bear of some sort. Now, I do have an example of a, of a bear, and so it, uh, it's a quite large print. But in reality, it, its length is not far out of the range of what we're, we're dealing with. Why don't we take your bare uh, uh, cast and, and, and roll and, it along yeah. the ground? Say that if during that step there was a bit of a drag out here like that. Whoa, look at See? That. that. Then you can that, have this, yeah. That looks, I, I'd say that looks pretty similar. You have an area where the initial imprint is very clear of the, of the digit and then the, all this up here looks like to me like it's a drag out. Right. Are there living bears in Vietnam that have feet about that same size? There are. There's the Malaysian, Malaysian sun, bear, sun bear and also the Asiatic black bear. The, the, the possibility of it being a misidentified bear track is mm -hmm. still very real in my mind. Okay. Gary Linderer says he didn't see a bear. So the question remains, what might be living in the Vietnamese jungle that could account for what he saw? Right. Is there any kind of monkey or ape-like creature that lives in this jungle? Orangutans. They don't live there now, but they did up to maybe 10,000 years ago, unless they've been very, very quiet. We could go back to the orangutan and... All right, so let's give this more orangutan proportions. Yeah. Let's think about the limbs. Definitely, you need the arms to be longer and the Long. legs to be shorter. It still doesn't look right. You know what, I think we just need, we need more data. I think we should send them to see the fossil skeletons. Aside from humans, orangutans are the last great ape to have lived in Vietnam. And they kind of match descriptions of our wild man. They just might help us build our beast, but there's only one way to see them. We're heading out to see an orangutan skeleton. There isn't any alive in Vietnam anymore, and this is the only intact skeleton they've ever found. Excellent. Can we can we take a look at it? Why not? Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you find this, Dr. Long? Oh uh, uh, more than ten years ago. Ten years ago. So how would it normally stand if, if it wasn't uh, laid? Well, all laid out. They later. can sort of stand like bow legged like that. Yeah which makes the legs even shorter. When you look at how short the femur is, the, th the thigh bone, and also the shin bone. But typically when they move, they're kind of like 
Yeah, yeah. Like that, they, no, they're all right by this way. They knuckle, oh, like, yeah, knuckle walk. They're knuckles. Okay. It is definitely knuckle walking, but you've got to remember, orangutan's hardly ever on the ground. If it could stand absolutely straight legs, you know, orangutan, it would look so dumb, you know, compared to us. It looks so unbalanced. Looks like you, actually. Oh, looks like me. It's the top part. It's like <laughs> your upper body in my lower your body. Legs. <laughs> there we go. OK, so if I put my hips, hello, baby. You go head, hips, look where my hands come to compared to its hands, look where my feet are compared to its feet. That's actually pretty, it's pretty scaled well to me, dude. It's actually your feet there. aren't far off it. <laughs> <laughs> so me and you would make the perfect man-human you know. orangutan hybrid. Exactly. Proportionally, it doesn't look like a like a, a man. It looks like you know it's going to have such big, long, gangly arms and very short legs. It's just going to look ridiculous. Once we put human proportions to the bottom half, yeah, then we'll have our wild man. So we're going to go back from the bow legs up to the human legs again. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think? Here's what it's going to kind of look like in the Beast movie. Love the way he's walking. His head looks great. But I think we need more sightings, frankly. There's actually a really interesting eyewitness account um, that Stephen Francis should check into. It's a guy in the South who saw more than one wild man and for a lot longer than Linderer. We're hoping this eyewitness can fill us in on the wild man's behavior. Does he prefer swinging from the treetops or running on the ground? Is he more like a man or an orangutan? Historically, wild man sightings occurred when villagers ventured deep into the untamed jungle to hunt or collect wood. They'd come back with terrifying tales, just as our eyewitness did. Thank you very much. Actually, come on. So tell us about the, the story. Like, how did this all unfold? Like, were you just walking through the woods, or? You know, he would go home and làm gì trong rừng và thì anh thấy vào lúc nào anh có thể kể lại lúc đó cũng đã đi rừng đi năm cổ đi đi rừng nên bao thủy buổi sáng buổi thì, chiều thì uh, khoảng đôi, đôi chân nửa ngày chơi uh, âm âm mù buổi chiều cự nửa nửa ngày chiều nửa ngày á did you get a good look of the details of the face anh có nhìn được how it looks giống như người rồi đó cái mặt người giống như mặt người thôi chứ ai nên chưa kỹ có phải người gặp gần với liên quan ảnh đâu mà kỹ nhưng mà có lông lá thì thấy lông lá trên người hay là người người lông giống như mau xuống chút chút theo cây xuống một đoạn khoảng hai mét How long did he see them for was it a minute or a couple of seconds or five to ten minutes ngồi trên cây giống như mấy đó nó nó chạy chạy như vậy đó this is a really interesting sighting, actually. He said they were in the trees and that when they finally did notice him, they jumped from the trees and went away on land. Oh, that argues for a mostly terrestrial creature. Where is this? It's in, uh, he's, he saw this thing in Kabang National Park. Let me, let me show you where it is. It's okay. a really amazing place. Okay. It's beautiful montane rainforest. It's just amazing. Mm. Lots of new mammals have been discovered there. Here's the spot, and if they're going to find clues as to how to help us build this model, they're going to find it there. Vietnam is a zoologist's dream. New species are being discovered here all the time, including a 100 kilo ox. In the past decade, 30 animal species have been discovered in Phong Nha Kibang National Park. Vietnam is chock-a-block with a kind of dense, hilly jungle humans can barely navigate. Add in 20 straight years of warfare, and you can understand why scientists have scarcely begun to discover what's out there. Relic populations of orangutan? Maybe. The occasional wild man? Not so sure. I think tomorrow is going to be a really important day. I'm not 100% sure what Francis will make of it. I am... Tired. I'm not really sure what to bring to the jungle, actually. Uh, I guess water, uh, hand sanitizer. It might be pretty good on the longboard, but 
I'm afraid that's going to be no help to him over the next few days, which is a good thing. Twelve hours later, we've made it to the edge of the park. This is where our eyewitness says he saw two wild men, and it looks like perfect wild man country. Dense, mountainous, remote, and largely unexplored. OK, behind us, Fiongya Kabang National Park. It's possibly one of the most impenetrable areas of the planet, to the point where probably 60% of it has not been visited by a human ever. This is really thick territory basically it's just gonna be incredibly difficult to get around but this is where our beast lives so this is what we're looking for this park covers almost 800 square kilometers it's treacherously rocky and has nearly impenetrable jungle we definitely have our work cut out for us and who knows what we'll come across in here We're about to enter Kiban National Park, one of the least explored jungles on planet Earth, and all in the quest to find out more about the wild man of Vietnam. Our eyewitness said the wild men can climb trees and run on the ground. Now that's unusual. Most animals do one or the other well, but not both. To run and climb in the jungle like this, our beast needs some pretty spectacular feet. What we've got to work out is that if we've got a wild man, how's he getting about in this jungle? Orangutans, you know, is it's a big animal, but it lives in the in the tops of the trees. But it's got legs for that. It's got short, stubby legs with gripping feet. If it can stand straight up like we do, yep. but have feet like like apes, is that possible? If you want it to climb and to run, it's going to have a half and half foot. If this was its leg. Okay. Right now, it would be more like, like this, right? With the toes or something like that? Yeah, and okay. here's the thumb. Is that what you mean? You can't have big, long, finger-like toes right. for climbing. Imagine this was my foot, and you can do that. You know, the, that's what makes the wrist so useful. And if you have, a, you know, if you have your, your ankle does that, right. so instead of just stepping with your toes, trying to grab hold, you can turn it sideways and grab. If it's jumping off a tree, and tackling down its prey, yeah, it, that would be pretty cool. If our wild man can do a bit of that, it's not going to be as graceful in the trees as an orangutan or, or one of the monkey species. This the toe is like an opposable thumb for the foot? Yeah, exactly, yeah. So I think that one looks pretty good, actually. I think that's about as far as it needs to go. Check this out. are for the walking and the feet are for the arboreal habitat. If you are actually going to use these feet to grab onto something, you need a mobile ankle. This is going to be my artistic input here. I'll, I'll just throw in a, something that can kind of be between the two. OK. So we'll just say for uh, he can grab and grip. Sure. It's as if he's gripping a, uh, totally. a trunk. A tree a trunk, tree. yeah. We know how it moves now, but yeah, what's it eating? If it's going to spend time on the ground, a lot of the great apes will actually uh, do a bit of um, kidnivorous behavior. There's a zoologist report of a slow loris, which is a tiny little monkey-like creature. Big, cuddly, big, round eyes. And uh, a, a mother orangutan bitch-slapping it to the ground, literally just slaps it straight out of a tree, goes down, as it tries to crawl away, picks it up, bites oh. the back of its head, pops its skull, sucks its brains out, eats its eyes, pull all the, uh, the chest open with its teeth, eats its genitals. It's not pretty. Most of the great apes do this now and then, but the orangs in particular. What's interesting about that is not that they do it often, it's just that they're capable of it, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, they can take a small creature and bite through its skull that says something about its teeth. If I understand, I can give it really big fangs now. I got an idea. Yeah? Bigger. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is what it might look like when I bring it to life. That's wicked. It 
basically got every aspect of its shape. Um, what we really need to know now, though, is where it, where it lived. Caves make perfect sense because caves, especially deep caves, stay the same temperature year round. As soon as you get underground, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't vary hardly at all, and that's why so many animals live in them. So our job now is to find the perfect cave for our wild man to live in. Caban is just the place for that. In fact, the world's largest cave was just discovered deep inside this park. It extends six and a half kilometers through limestone cliffs, testament to the fact that nobody really knows what could be lurking around in here. There are a bunch of eyewitnesses that has seen the wild man through these woods. Caves are the perfect place for a wild man to be hiding. Oh, okay. This cave right there. Oh, it's, it's filled with water, but maybe there's a dry area inside where our wild man could live. I'm gonna check it out. a bit deeper. Thought it was going to be a cave we could walk into and uh, that our wild man would sort of sleep in. You know, but um, yeah, it was his bath. Definitely no dry spots. So I'm heading back. It's done wonders for me because I was starting to ming a bit. Yeah, I'd walking. agree with you on that. <laughs> I was having to walk. A good distance from you. Oh, you see, to not smell the funk coming off of your body. B.O. or not, we still have to find a cave that's just right for our wild man. You know what, dude? I don't understand how a wild man could sneak up on any prey in this jungle. It would make too much noise. As you can see, when I walk, I'm huffing and puffing making all sorts of noises, basically announcing I'm arriving. <sighs> Holy cow, look at this thing. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's like something from the Jungle Book. It's like you've stumbled into a um, ruined cathedral that the jungle has taken over or something, because it looks like... Yeah, it's pretty awesome. All right, let's go look at some caves. Poop. We might have found poo, which could be some sort of animal. That's herbivore. What does that mean? That's um, that's plant material, Matt. That's okay. not um, that's not um, meat eater poo. Meat eater poo smells like dog, basically. So that's a cow patty type thing. How the hell does a cow get through this? I mean. I know. Look at this. This is almost like a dead end, you know? There's some really, like, just a sliver of a walkway there, and then just more rocks. I mean, you're surrounded by rocks. What, what could get there? I don't know. Don't know. The Go. wild man can. <laughs> <laughs> There's a cave right there. That's a perfectly good habitat. I'm telling you, man. There's a poo that big, which you said can't be a monkey. Well, Possible for a deer to get through here. I don't know what it is, to be honest. There's something there. What the f was that noise? This jungle freaks me out. It's like a lost world where no one ever goes. We're supposed to be looking for a wild man cave, but now I'm wondering if we're actually gonna come across a real wild man. There could be anything out here.
What was that noise? Look right there. Okay. All right. I know, yeah, he's getting a bit... All right, I know. Relax, relax, relax. Okay, now listen. Not a lot of noise, is it? Yeah. They make no noise going through there. That's how big animals can move wow. through a forest. This seals the deal for me. Now it's totally registering with me how a large beast could go right through the jungle, through the hills, through crevices, and still stay silent. Now we have everything we need to put the finishing touches on our wild man. We know where he lives and how he moves. We have every last detail in place, from feet to fur color. So it's goodbye, Vietnam. We've got a beast movie to watch. right there. It so, is. Yeah. No, I like that. that good ending. Good. The key to building this beast? Figuring out how an upright walking creature could run through the jungle and swing through the treetops with ease. Hello, baby. By giving our Vietnamese wild man an orangutan's upper body, human legs, and hybrid feet, along with a wicked set of fangs. I got an idea. Bigger. <laughs> We've got ourselves a beast legend.